I guess it's working. And I do believe you can hear me. Can you hear me? All right. Hey everyone. Since I tested that microphone, I think you can hear me. Welcome to uh, Beatport's Twitch channel. Welcome to, I guess it's the first episode of, uh, what is this? A production session, studio session, it's called. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Uh, let me first find this here on my iPad so I can follow your comments, you know. I'm uh, a little late on that, hold on. There we go. And I see we have like a 20 second delay. Session, it's called. Yeah. Huh. See what we Talking to myself. We have a 20 second delay. That means if I'm asking a question, I need to wait 20 seconds until you actually hear the question and then probably another little while until you write something in the comments, right? Okay. Take your time. Do we have, by the way, is anyone in charge here of Beatport? I know Johan, you're watching and Dave, you might be uh, here as well. Is this actually limited to three hours or is this kind of a, can we go a little longer or shall we stop after three hours? I mean, I'm not sure where we are in three hours, so I'm just asking the question, right? Um, hello, back to Switzerland. So I do, Got, I got Twitch working on my iPad, meaning I am able to see your comments. Yeah. So in case you, you wonder what I'm doing, if I'm just sitting here staring at a screen, I'm probably most likely reading your comments. Um, also, since we're in the day and age of social media, I might want to share what I'm doing here on my social media, right? Yeah. So in case you uh, I need to turn down the volume here. So I'm on my phone as well. And I share this. How about how about I invite you to be with me when I do my Instagram story. Let's turn around. What's going on here? Hey everyone, I'm live on Beatport Twitch right now. So if you have nothing better to do, join me. What? Hit the link. Was that good? Can I post this? All right. Oh, huh. see some, some of this. Okay, uh, everyone, this is a new for me because I, I mean, I, I practiced a little on, on Sunday. I did a little test stream, let's sort of say, on my YouTube channel, in case you haven't seen it. Don't go there now because you're busy now, as I see. Um, I still gotta get used to the fact that I have to talk with myself here basically looking at the comments because uh usually when i do my alone together streams then i don't really speak that much or play music so i'm in my comfort zone and on our djs and beers uh on our djs and beers show every thursday in case you never heard of this uh at 9 p.m central european time i usually speak with Matt, with Ali, with David, with Mo and our guests. So this time I'm just here by myself, <laughs> which I have been in the past six, seven months, quite a bit. And I don't mind that. And uh, Beatport invited me to do a studio session. At least that's what it says on the lower part of your screen on the right hand corner, right? So what shall we do? Um, I was thinking about this and uh, let me give you some, some basic info for where we are here right now. Uh, this, I got to give you a little bit of a background story here. Uh, this room where I'm sitting in, I was in the middle of basically building a new studio, just one floor below here. Like they just laid the floor, 
sort of not even the wooden floor just the floor be, be underneath the floor that's where uh, I'm not doing the uh, the estrich I'm not I'm not I'm not aware of the English uh, uh, word of this so it's basically construction site down there but since when the pandemic hit i had to stop that building for various reasons and uh so i'm basically on top of a construction site which is downstairs where i wanted to build like a really good looking instagram postable super studio where everybody is super crazily uh, Im impressed when they see the pictures of a, such a studio um well it's when you look at my alone together streams you see the space because I'm streaming from down there. I built a little DJ booth down there and I got my big, nice old PMC MB2 speakers out of the storage because they have been in storage for two years. I've had to leave my old studio space two years ago. Uh, and then I stored everything. Basically, most of my gear and everything was in storage, like the bigger stuff. Um, so essentially, this room was a room where I just stored boxes of stuff and records and, and some of them. Um, and then the pandemic hit, so I turned this room into the rave cave. Some of you might remember that. Uh, and I did my first uh, DJ streams from the rave cave. And um, which was fun. So you, you basically probably see this side. And because this room was supposed to be rebuilt as well, well, I rebuilt that down, down there too, I decided to use some colors on the wall and I just sprayed stuff on top and everything and uh, moved the boxes out and uh, put, turned it into, let's say, a DJ slash a little bit of equipment uh, place. And then I moved because I realized I have this space down there in the summer. I moved all my DJ gear and I, as I said, I got the speakers out of my, uh, out of storage. I, I built that DJ booth and I got this really nice space down there with, which by now is essentially a club in the house. And everybody else who lives here with, with me in this house is always welcome to join the club and everybody's happy to have a club in the house now, especially during these times. And uh, some of you have seen my streams and then you see my neighbors, some of my neighbors sometimes dancing in front of me so that's as close as i could get to a club um apparently someone at beatport saw those streams and thought it was a good idea to invite me to do a stream and i said yeah of course i do a stream with you and then they <laughs> told me nah it's a studio session and i'm like i don't even have a studio right now um and they said well you have this setup which is great just use this and i was like of course because this is lesson number one which i wanted to tell you when we're here you don't need a studio. You don't need a fancy studio. You don't need nothing like this. Um, all you need basically is essentially a laptop, a pair of headphones, and that's it. I guess that's it. And a couch maybe, or a chair, a table. Um, you don't really need anything more. And that is your own personal studio. Um, I used to make the mistake to sometimes postpone certain let's say productions or ideas of making music because i always felt like oh i need to have this machine or i need to get my space sorted out or i need to move the speakers around until i can start doing stuff uh learn from me don't do that like it's the best moment to start certain stuff is always now it's right now so essentially you don't really need a studio space uh, you just need, as I said, a laptop or maybe you have some gear, a little bit of gear. And uh, so in this case, I'm actually a pretty good example here right now because I don't have a studio right now. So I've used this room and I had access to some of my gear. So what was the gear that I had access to? Um, my electron analog rhythm. I found some old cork. Then actually not old. <laughs> and don't laugh. There were still like in the original packaging <laughs> in some box. Um, uh, some of these little machines, but I haven't really touched it yet. Uh, I got some uh, external flanger delay units from Electrocarmonix, which are over there. You, you'll see this later on in, in action. I have my Model 1 mixer here. Um, I have my old Dev Devilfish 303 here. Essentially, I have, uh, I have different camera perspectives. Don't worry about this. I have, uh, can you actually all still hear me? Can you still hear me? 
Can I? Can I hear? Oh, yeah, I have to wait. What twenty seconds until you can? Somebody can can send me a yes. Yes, that didn't take 10, 20 seconds. Great, thank you. My microphone is duct taped. There, this thing. My microphone is duct taped to my speaker. Um, yeah, what I, I got my old 909. Obviously, I never would put my 909 in a storage. So I had it home, at home, same with the 303. There is an 808 over there, which are my three original uh, Roland machines that I that I have since since I can think by the by, by now, you know, the 909, 808 and 303. Um, so I had those here and for some reason I had the Moog here. I don't know why. It wasn't a box. It, it, it was there. So it's the Sub 37, which is on my right hand side. Um, so I started to set that stuff up on the tables here. And that's the key. Use whatever you have connected in any way you feel like it and try to be creative. And just like today, I'm probably going to walk you through some ideas of how you can approach making music, um, what you can do, what you can use. Uh, do not postpone these ideas. Like you could, if you're obviously in front of a computer right now, you could go on, for example, the Ableton.com website and you can download live and you can test it 90 days fully functional for free. That's already like huge. Like this is, this is so much like uh, a lot of people sometimes even say like, uh, uh, oh, those plugins that come with Ableton Live. No, they're really, really good. So you have a full package of stuff you can already work with. Um, and yeah, teach yourself, work, work with that stuff, find, find out. It's, it's about the process. It's not about what the outcome will be. Definitely not tonight what the outcome will be. Um, uh, at least I hope it's not going to be that terrible. Um, but it's about the process. It's about what you're doing um, uh, instead of what you think you want to be doing once you have acquired certain things like a big studio, great speakers. Um, yeah, enough of that. You get my point, right? So... Um, since this is not scripted, I'll probably stop and hold for a second to think about what else I wanted to mention to you. So again, this is an improvised studio space, which is so much fun. Um, and I literally, because my approach or my idea of what I've learned over the last, let's say, what is it now, 2020? Oh God, how can I forget this year? Um, Let's say I got into music production, if you want to call it that, 25 years ago um, with a dear friend of mine, Andre Walter, Andrew Wood, who was my co-producer in the, I would say, about first eight years, eight, nine years of music production. We were sitting together in a little studio in a little village uh, quite north of Frankfurt. And um, should I check your comments in the meantime a little bit? And... It was always the fun thing you you got, went to the studio and you were always thinking like how do we start how do i start a track and we usually would just put on a kick drum um we just would put on something like this do you hear that yes i see you hear that i need to a little disclaimer i need to watch my levels at some points because um the level that you're getting uh, usually matches the level that I'm putting out here, but um, when I wanna, don't want to like distort here, I need to, to turn up the level there and vice versa. So I kind of have to watch this. So I sometimes will ask the question, do you hear me? Do you hear the kick drum? Yes, loud and clear. Thank you very much. Um, so usually we would start to put a kick drum. You put a 4-4 beat kick drum. And then obviously that works at some points. You just like you have a kick drum going and then you just have to find something. What do we do with it? Like, what, what do we do? And, and after a while, you just get tired of starting with a kick drum and you think like, I, I need to start this, uh, different. So I've learned pretty quickly that you should not have a way how to start music production or your day in a studio or your, or your day on your couch with a laptop on your, on, on, on your lap do not fall into the trap to have a certain structure, a certain given 
uh, routine that you always do to start, just totally do it different every time. Like try a different approach, start with a sound, start with an atmosphere, start with something else, start with the something, get an idea, listen to a record, sample something, sample something. And that's, that's the idea which I had today, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, uh, essentially, about what's today, Tuesday, about four days ago, on Friday, this whole setup was like my computer was over there. I had this stuff kind of like all over the place over there. And I decided like, no, you know what? I'm going to get this table here. Like that table was over there and I put the, put the sub 37 here. So I, it's more like a studio feeling. You have this you thing, you know, but in order to do that, I needed to basically disconnect everything because only moving the computer from there to there meant I have to disconnect absolutely everything. I had to disconnect all the cables from all the, uh, uh, sound interfaces that I'm using here and that are currently running four sound interfaces here um, all the MIDI connections everything so that's why I did a test run on Sunday night which thanks again I want to say big hello and shout out to the Alone Together community it's a community that found a group of people that found each other during my Alone Together DJ streams which again you can find on my YouTube channel um, and uh, they were helping me like like I, I didn't I didn't tell anyone I just went online on my YouTube channel and I just tried out stuff and it just nothing was working I had a ghost in here which completely destroyed my sync sync all the time um, but it was fun what I want to tell you like that's that's the moments where you disconnect everything you reconnect it in a new way that's where you learn like um, of course we're all suffering sometimes of uh, of not being motivated to do something or don't know how to do something or just don't feel inspired, um, then do not do the same thing over and over again. Take apart your whole studio thing. Take it apart. Put everything in one corner. Start fresh. Put something new on. Take one synth, a synth that you haven't used for, for a long time and just dive deep into it and just not with the aim of making music, just with the aim of having fun. It's about, again, the process. It's, it's about what we're doing here. And I'm talking already for 20 minutes, not doing a thing. Um, so I should start at some point, right? And tell you the rest at some, uh, at some later date. Shall I? Shall we get into some music production? Anyways, I was stopping with, with the equipment. Thanks to Roland, by the way, um, they provided me during the lockdown with a, an SH-01A, which is basically the modern version of an SH-101 and uh, an MC-707, the groove box, although I don't really like to use the term groove box because this MC-707, I have to say, and we're looking into this a little bit too, uh, is, is, is probably already a studio in itself. It's pretty, pretty nice. It's really, 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 really cool. But we'll get into this stuff uh, anyways. Um, another quick little info for you. Anything I'm doing here, you shouldn't be thinking like, oh, I don't have that piece of gear because then I can't do this, you know? No, everything I'm doing here, I'm trying to do in a way that you could do it at home with your laptop without any gear at all. By downloading, for example, Ableton Live, I'm not getting any money of Ableton Live. I just checked on their website that the, to, that the free trial is still there for 90 days. Um, Anything that I'm doing here, it's more about the idea of how to do things. It's not about like, oh, I can, I want to get that sound, like exact sound of that Devilfish DO3. I happen to have that one. Um, and it's not about that exact sound. You can get a plugin and, and try to do similar things. It's just about the process. Do not copy what I'm doing here. Better not, because I'm not really sure what I'm doing anyways. Um, do, do find your own way of doing things. Um, thanks to YouTube, there's millions of tutorials if you find new machines. That's how I kind of learned about the 707. There's so many nice tutorials. And uh, you just dive deep into it and do this and do that. And you, you, just, you just play around and work with it. So in case you have a lack of inspiration of what music to do, forget about making music. Just dive into your machine and, and see what sounds are coming out, right? Um, Well, looking at your comments, 
Not music? Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, it's, it's 20 past 7. Let's make some music. All right, uh, I hope you can still hear me when I'm moving back. Um, I'm going to put those headphones on because just because so it's not going to feed back into into the microphone, right? But I can still talk to you when I have my headphones on, right? Yeah, so what I thought is when I've dug through my old records, um, hold on, we can, we can switch the view now because I have some other camera set up. Let's see what we, uh, what we have here. Look at this. Um, so this is over here. Hey, and if I'm moving over here, can you still hear me? <laughs> can you still hear me when I'm moving over here? All right. I just said like, what do we do when you, when you want to start something? Like, and you don't want to really start with a kick drum running on 4-4, right? Um, that might be a little noisy at times. Hold on. Where's my kick drum? There we go. There's a, just a random kick drum. Hello, I'm here. Um, hey, you still hear me? <laughs> yeah, great. Um, don't worry, I'll, I'm going to catch up the 20 minutes later if I'm allowed to do this. Am I allowed to do this? <laughs> I have another com camera here. Am I allowed to go on longer than I'm, al I'm allowed? Like, Johan, I'm asking you. Um, okay. Maybe we'll take this off. Oh, thanks, Johan. I just got the message. I can go longer. So let's see how long we do this. When uh, when you're been watching my DJ streams, I sometimes tend to not find an end of what I'm doing. Um, so what was I thinking for our session today? What shall we do? And then I thought, you know, how about we dig in old records? And I came across this beautiful record, which is one part, one of two parts, which is. Uh, can you see that? It is... Uh, <laughs> it's a record called Stigmata Loops. Stigmata was a label, and I've mentioned that man already, uh, or uh, is a label, uh, or was a label, that I did together with my friend Andre Walter, Andrew Wooden. And we released, uh, the original releases was 10 releases, each release had four tracks. Just the tenth release was a double 12 inch, so it had eight tracks. Meaning, um, there was altogether no, <laughs> four, 10, 40, 40, 48 tracks? 22, no, 44 tracks. Oh, my math is so off. Okay, basically 44 tracks. And uh, we decided at one point to release records that let me throw it on here let me change the camera angle um uh, that oops over there that solely consists out of loops can you see that some somehow some so it's loops but basically let me play it to you there's a loop from each from uh, there's a loop from each track on there. Wow. Okay, that's what I mean. It was really, really, really loud now, right? So I, had to, I, have, to, I have to watch the levels a little bit. It's not usually not that distorted. Um, I'm uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, loop records. Some of you might be. It's basically an endless loop on this record. And on, on each side, there is 11 loops. And in order to create a perfect loop on a record, uh, when it goes at 33, you have to have a loop um, that is 
133.3333 periodic um, uh, BPM because if you're good at math that means the loop is a perfect loop so the beginning there's no end there's no beginning it's an ongoing process it's a loop um, I found this record and I thought like why don't we sample these loops I throw them onto my MC 707 which is perfect for like that stuff you know you just sample those loops you chop them up and you put them on the pads and you have all these nice faders and uh, much more effects and everything and then we take it from there you know like that may be a good lesson and then I'm trying to incorporate all these machines that I have at my disposal right now oh I forgot one thing I have another I can show you here uh, in my setup I have another Are we back? Are we back? Hold on, sorry. I'm, I'm back in a second. Back in a second. Come on. Okay. Maybe I have to check that camera again. Um, it's mostly the cables. Anyway, it's down here. <laughs> so much for a live stream. Does it work again? No. Why is it not working? Hold on. There we go. All right, this down here, that's why I wanted to show you. This is an H8000 from Aventide, um, a beautiful machine that I have, I don't know, 15 years now, and it still holds up uh, today. Aventide plugins are really amazing plugins and the company always made pretty amazing stuff. So. I have all that gear, including that little uh, Aventide, which I uh, connected via send and return on my mixing desk. Um, the 101, the 303 goes into the mixing desk. The 909 goes into an Antelope Audio uh, uh, Orion 32 sound card, which I happen to have an extra one because I'm DJing with those things and it was just standing around here. So I thought, why not connect every individual output of my 909 into it's over there you, you can see that into uh, my antelope audio connect the antelope audio via a dat to my apollo sound card which is my main sound card on my desktop because i'm using uad plugins as well which are on that sound card am i already too technical for you guys or not technical enough i'm not even sure who this show is intended for <laughs> <laughs> um, because pros probably watch this and say like what is this guy doing um, like I'm asking myself that question a lot but for those who um, might be new to music production maybe this is a good show for you so hang in there stick with me um, let's get back to the loops so I thought I'll get all that stuff here connected and I found the stigmata record and let's just sample those loops um, let's listen to some of them. So that was uh, the very first Stigmata release. I'm not sure if you can. I'm not sure if you can still hear me talking while I'm playing music. Uh, otherwise, I'm talking to myself, which I'm. Yeah, I'll do. After seven months being alone in here, uh, you do that quite a bit. Um, so again, loops. Another loop. You, you get the point. Um, it's it's a record full of loops, endless loops. It's a it's a one part of two part records. And because I'm a nice person, and you don't want to watch me sampling all those loops all the time and putting them on the, on the MC707, I have already prepared that. And since I already prepared that, I thought a little nice giveaway for those who stick with me towards the end, or maybe leave now, do something better, and come back at the end. 
I will post a WeTransfer link with all those 22 loops that I've sampled of that record um, in the comments of this Twitch stream. Is that a good idea? You like? Do you like that? You want to have that? Great. So I thought this would be a good starting point. And uh, then let's just continue from here, right? So imagine now the process was like this. I would be going, you can, you can basically uh, sample directly into the MC707, but since I, uh, since I have everything connected to my computer here, let me show you my computer screen, which is here. And I'm down here. Oh. Um, I could basically, this is my Model 1 mixer input. Turn it up. You can go and record this in here. And uh, then it sounds like this. So I'm, as you can see, I'm using Ableton Live for this. Um, so what I did is I recorded each individual loop into here. Um, I don't know if this is supposed to be an Ableton Live tutorial. Well, it's a probably a tutorial about anything and nothing at the same time. Um, since I run the record on zero, like there's no pitch. Obviously, I know that the tempo is 133.333. So this is why I go in here. I have the warp marker. I probably would put the warp marker somewhere here. Um, delete that one. Take that warp marker and then hit 133.333. Bam. And knowing this, that the loop has this tempo, I can basically go here and... Uh, Loop it. Let's see if that was like it's intended to work. Hold on. Bum, bum, bum. Well, the loop length is not right, but you get the point. Um, so this is how I did it here. And then I uh, exported those loops, um, tweaked them a little bit, obviously, um, made them louder and uh, put them on the SD card, which, or basically I connected the MC707 in its uh, storage mode with my computer and th threw it over into the MC0707. So that was the, the procedure that is just a work procedure. You don't really need to witness me doing this. Um, that's why I thought I'd rather use the time. And, uh, and let's get rid of this thing here. Ah, on my microphone. The duct tape is not holding the microphone. Okay. Um, essentially, uh, I use that time to talk to you. And, it's <laughs> and I, I, I'm sure you like that. So, I, on those four channels, I essentially put these samples. And let me give you just one advice from the very beginning. When you work with sounds and samples, it's some mistake I used to do uh, too. Uh, uh, my neighbor is watching. Hi Ben, he's just across the, the, the room here. Okay. Um, essentially, when you listen to, to, to sounds, you know, you wanna, you wanna go somewhere in here and you, you, you're trying to check out and find new sounds, don't try to listen to them dry maybe always put some sort of reverb on there, delay or something, because dry is so unnatural. And sound, it, it's a way more fun, way more natural to hear with a little bit of atmosphere of a real reverb or even a little delay or something like this. Always have this going because, um, uh, hear the little reverb in the background? because it's more natural, it's more fun. If you listen to dry samples all the time, especially when you go through sample banks and stuff like this, um, you're still here. I don't know if you want to see me while I'm talking or from over there. Uh, change the camera angle. 
There we go. See a little bit more. You see the loops. Um, uh, yeah, that's better. Everything is a little in the way here. Um, something in the way. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so when you put some re reverb delay on your samples, uh, when you listen to them going through sample banks, you don't get as tired as quickly. That's what actually I found. And it's, it's way more fun to do it that way. Um, sorry, I get distracted all the time because I sometimes think I need to watch your, your uh, dry is never good. Exactly. I need to watch your, your, your comments here and there. And there's way more comments than I'm usually used to reading because I'm, when I do my DJ streams, I quickly scan through. But this, um, now I have a little bit more time. Okay. Cool. All right. And I see the core crew is with me again. <laughs> hey, hey, everyone. Um, all right. So again, so it's better to have a little bit of a liveliness to your sounds. So what I've done, I did all these samples. Um, I'm going to post the WeTransfer link uh, at the end of the show in the comment field. Um, then you can have all these loops for yourself and do with, with them whatever you like. Maybe do something with them, like not use them like this in a track because, ah, damn it. Hold on. <laughs> my, uh, my microphone just fell down. I'm not sure if you can still hear me. I need a bigger piece of duct tape. All right. You might wonder why antelope audio super edge go mic that I have here to the, my left which I'm using uh, for everything else and for the DJs and beers show okay it's holding um, because I literally have no USB slot available anymore <laughs> I've tried everything so it's got to go with this little road mic which is on top of my computer and I guess you can still hear me otherwise I would probably um, probably get a message hopefully somewhere if you don't hear me um where were we uh essentially yeah dry wet um samples listening to samples right uh stigmata loops and uh, which i'm going to post later on in, in there if you use those loops um maybe do it something different with it because they were done this way and that's already been done do your own thing what i did is i uh put those the let's say you don't really need to sample the kick drum from a 20 year old loop record it makes no sense you have way better kick drums now so i just used some of the sounds here yeah and you hear this yeah i just always need to check the sound the sound to the volume so we have this maybe that's a little too much delay of this. They're roughly cut, those samples. So if you use a sample in the MC 707, you just go in there and you just change the, 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 the start point and the end point. Ah, look at these. That's already working. Oh, another one. I think that was what Stigmata was all about, like really distorted chords and sounds on top of a beat, like that. That is obviously not. Anyways, so we did this and that already gives us a certain amount of samples um, to work with, to do something with. So as an inspiration, maybe you want to do this. Again, it doesn't need the outcome or the goal shouldn't necessarily be I want to produce a track or it needs to be a, a record. M making music is supposed to be fun and you get lost in it. I also find actually producing music is quite an intimate process. You're mostly with yourself. You're sitting in front of machines. You're spending hours and hours going through menus, trying to fiddle around, reconnecting, cabling and everything. Obviously, you don't want to watch me doing this. You probably most likely more want to watch me talking like I'm doing here right now. Um, joking. We'll get to the music part, promised. Um, it is uh, it is about the process. So let's start with something. And I shouldn't lose my plot at some point. Okay. Um, and because 
I told you not to do the same thing over and over again. I thought I'm going to break that rule right away because that's, a, that's, that's it, what we're doing electronic music for. It's like you can break all the rules. Um, let's start with a kick drum in a 4-4 four, four beat. You hear that one? Am I good, good with my levels? Perfect. So get used to that kick drum. It's going to be running here for a while now. Um, and sometimes I do read the comments. Signed 909 is priceless. Yes, this one is priceless. <laughs> because uh, you guys want to know who signed it? All right, on this side here is DJ Rush. And the accent was done by Ben Sims. As everybody can read, this is Steve Rahmat. Up there is Richie Horton. Obviously, he signed it in 2001, I believe. Jean Moore. Johannes Heil. He just, I visited him in his studio recently. And uh, no, he visited me. I didn't take my 999. He visited me here, and I visited him too. So he put his initials here. Umek, Speedy J took the kick drum. Uh, Wink took, took the first five. Uh, 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 buttons on my 909. Cisco from the Advent is over here. In 2003, somehow Carl Cox managed to sign my 909. And on the other side, there's Adam Bayer. Don't think I don't think I'm ever gonna sell that one. So, right. And I'm sure you wanted to know who signed that. <laughs> um, I sold my 909 last year for a small fortune. Yeah, you can. I mean, obviously you don't necessarily need a 909, honestly, like there is so much good stuff out there. Um, if you have an MC707, all the 909 stuff is in here, but obviously it's a different hands-on machine. But Roland also has a boutique version of the 909, which sounds perfectly fine as well. And it has the same buttons and knobs, so you can twiddle with this around. Um, but also, if you don't want to have any hardware, there's this beautiful company, which I'm probably going to mention a little bit more uh, uh, tonight, uh, is a D16. Uh, my friends from Poland, D16. Um, and they probably made the most uh, honest version. Let me get on this here again. The most honest version of a 909, which is called a Drumasone. Let's open a Drumasone here on on one track, uh, obviously. In order to open a drummer zone, I need a MIDI track. The drummer zone, as you can see. Ah, stop it. Is essentially another 909 clone. Um, it's pretty affordable and it actually, what's good? Now, I, I don't think the ghost that I had in here who destroyed my uh, um, sync on Sunday night is now messing around with my mouse. That's great. But again, what I, the same thing I said on Sunday night was like, uh, people were asking me, are you getting frustrated if things don't work? And I'm trying, I'm not trying to get frustrated if things don't work. It's just another challenge. And if you overcome the challenge, you learn something, hopefully, uh, to uh, put it back on. Anyways, this drama zone by uh, the, my friends of uh, D16 uh, is a very, very, very good one. They have another one. I just surely hope that my mouse is going to continue to work somehow. Maybe it's just a Bluetooth connection. Um, they also did an 808 version, which is the Nephaton, which is this one. As you can hear already. Sounds very 808-ish, right? It's the internal sequence, so that's why. But we don't need this now. I just wanted to show you. Um, I get back to the D16 group in a little bit because they've done something else, which is a very good plugin for uh, making kick drums, right? So let's get back to this one here. You probably don't want to have this little screen all the time down here, do you? This screen, this one, do you want to have that there? No, huh? Let's make it a little smaller and I keep it down here. Uh, maybe I keep it here, then you can still see the studio sessions. Is that a good spot? <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe you don't want to see it here at all. Let's get rid of it. Um, 
getting back to where we were. See, I'm sometimes losing the script. Just showed you some some really nice plugins though. So that's a good thing. Um, getting back to this here. So we have um, sounds on here. And what do you need in order to start a track? You need to have an idea. You need to have a starting point. You can abandon that starting point like at any point. Like never really feel like you need because you make that decision early on to, for example, sample some loops that you need to stick to that idea. Maybe you only sampled those loops to get your mind focused on something else and you never end up using those loops even. Like always kind of... Um, uh, yeah, be okay with abandoning ideas. Even if you once thought that idea was massive and wonderful, just if you don't like it at some point anymore, you, it doesn't inspire you anymore. Just get the quicker you get rid of, rid of that idea, the the, uh, the 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 quicker you have space for a new idea. Um, so, but essentially, we have these samples on the on the seven oh seven now. And since I have this beautiful one hundred one, I thought like let's let's just have a kick drum run and we'll do a little bass line with this uh, with this thing and um, uh, so we don't not wasting any time with me trying to find stuff I've already prepared a little bass line kind of thing here for you let's see if it's still running um, that's great it's not why is it not running because it crashed. That happens. Actually, it happens quite a bit. I've noticed two things with these two Roland machines. I have to tell them. It's like the 101 sometimes just doesn't give any signal anymore. It's, uh, and you, you, I'm not entirely sure why. Now it does. And on the MC707 with the latest um, update, can you actually hear me talking while the kick drum is running? Checking, checking. Yeah, it's good that you're comforted by me getting off track. That's nice. Um, aren't we all the same? Uh, yeah, you, you can hear me. Anyways, um, the 707 has a new update, which is the 1.6 update. And since I have this on there, for some funny reason, at some point you lose all the sounds on the first and the second channel, on these two channels. That's why I'm try to use the other channels and don't have anything important on those two channels because you never know when they when, 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 when they're just muted they're gone it's like essentially like right now here there is stuff on there that's great or here whatever that is um, but at some point you just hit this and nothing is coming out anymore and you didn't do anything and you have to delete the whole track um, and import a new drum track or a tone track if you want to learn more about the 707, watch some tutorials because... Is this a tutorial about this? No, maybe a little, I don't know. Anyways, 101 is working again, so we have some sort of sound. And now I know why we don't hear anything because I need to turn the input on. that is <laughs> again bear with me it's like the first time I'm doing anything something like remotely even close to this so um, I might some sometimes get a little off topic and again it's live so I cannot edit anything out um, you know you got to start with something something that gives you an atmosphere and a, and a vibe and lately I've been into these kind of arpeggiator-ish kind of sounds you know, and what you can do with it and especially I like to combine bass lines with each other so we have this one we have the 303 and I love bass which sometimes in the mixing process is a bit of an issue um, but we get to this later because we're gonna get into the from out of the box which is this hopefully with something listenable 
into the box and then we get into like the nice uh, mixing stuff and the side chaining and uh, all, all that all those things so for now I just want to have a, uh, a bass running as I said I have the Eventide H8000 as a send and return effect Nothing about 
no, nothing, absolutely nothing against digital. If there's some per one person who really always has defended digital, then that's me. Um, but digital has come so far by now that you can even emulate some sort of analog behavior in a, in a really cool way. Anyways, my 909 is still fluctuating quite heavily, so in case you're noticing some sync issues, it's not me understanding how things work, it's my 909 giving us a hard time. Um, let's just continue. Let's continue to do something. Um, how about we'll try to work on something with the samples now. We have this running, which is a good starting point maybe, because we have something to um, play around with too. or basically a boutique version of the 101s works really well. You could even go and um, and uh, have the uh, have different different modes of your sounds. Uh, Universal. What is uni, uni standing for again? Polyphonic and chorus. Obviously, you didn't have these choices with the original 909. Uh, 101 so we stick to mono for for this right now because we're gonna keep things uh, we want to keep things simple um, and I've already uh, came up with some stuff so 707 let's have the top view bam requested birds for you from Sunday night. <laughs> thanks guys for it. By the way, again, thanks for helping me on Sunday night. Not sure if it was, has, uh, if it's gonna be benefiting tonight's show of this, but it was definitely helpful that you helped me. So I could do anything, but let's just stick to this one here now. I put this uh, sound there. And because we have the MC-707, there's so much more stuff in there that I've already... have some sounds here. Let's add some patty stuff. Like this one. So the MC-707 essentially is a machine that you can have uh, tr drum tracks. Obviously 909 sounds, but any other sounds, you can go in here. Um, and you have a huge, huge, like incredibly big li library of sounds, um, uh, which which makes this thing a whole studio in in one box essentially, with with without needing a computer. Um, you can have tone tracks, which uh, you can have pads like this. Tone tracks then look more like a, a keyboard. If you were able to play keyboard, not like me, then you could just play something like this. Um, you have looper tracks where you can sample stuff in, in real time and it stretches in real time. It's, 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 it's a pretty nice machine. It, it's really close. You know, Electron, which is this machine here, yeah, makes amazing synthesizers and really amazing stuff. But I heard people saying, in order to like that, you have to be an electron person. Um, apparently I am, because I like that stuff a lot. But I have the feeling that Roland took a lot of inspiration of the electron stuff. You know, they have a little screen where you kind of like go into the stuff. You have your um, endless encoders where you, uh, where you assign your knobs and everything. It's pretty similar, feeling-wise. Although I have to say the MC-707 is more intuitive. The Electron, I literally connected it on Sunday, but I didn't even use it. And yesterday I, I started to play around with it again and get my head around it. Um, it is a little bit more complicated, but the sound of this thing is so, so amazing. Um, let me see, I've, I've already had something here. There's a little loop running in the background. Um, but let's keep it simple so we stick to 16th. And if you want, you can 
going back to the MC707, it essentially does the same thing. And we stick to this. So we have already something running. To keep, to keep things simple, I, I stuck to the note C and everything I'm doing. And what's going on here? Oh, I was looking at the wrong mouse. Um, a little quick. Uh, a quick. A quick little info about this year. So much to do because I want to. Oh no, I want to get that little picture in there so you see me again. Hello, um, let me open my master channel because everything is going essentially to this through this master channel. And uh, usually on my master channel, I have uh, I can let this run in the background, you can still hear me, right? But we don't need to listen to it all the time. Um, I usually have a, a fab filter pro L, so you you um. Yeah, you use it at some point, obviously, but try to stay away from anything on your master uh, channel uh, as long as you can, really. I mean, even I fall into the trap at some point, maybe even tonight, um, that you turn on your limiter because you you drive every channel so loud because you, you turn this up, turn this up. But if you do this, you kind of fool yourself because you somehow get something going, which you think, oh, that's cool. But it's completely crashing the um, uh, the limiter and it just, uh, no pun intended, I guess, it limits you in a, in a way of what you do with it then because you would have to take down all your levels on your individual channels again in order to make it uh, to, to turn your, your, your uh, sounds in a way that you can use them and record them. Um, and then everything sounds different. Everything sounds completely different. Everything sounds uh, weird. So try to stay away of uh, using a limiter from the beginning. I keep it turned off. You can see this down here. It is turned off. And um, when I play something, I keep an eye on this master output here, which is green because we do not want to get into the red, which is very easy. As you can see, and then my output also goes red. So we want to, we want to stay away from this, all right? But already this, there's a little bit, to change the assign those knobs to anything I want I just assigned this knob to to the tune and uh, essentially you can... because a chord might work on a certain tune but but doesn't work on a different tune or it maybe sounds better I usually like to tune things down I, I like things a little bit in the in the lower frequency range um, I'm really I'm really uh, happy in the lower frequency range, let's put it this way. So, but maybe we try something different. What is happening here on this channel? Oh, see, there's another one. Let's get this, let's leave this running as an atmosphere so we don't have only the kick drum running. And it's just like baking a cake, essentially. You need to have some certain ingredients that you need as a fundament. Fun fundament, um, and I would I would argue this would be a 303 line. Let's see what we have. I I sorry, 
if I have to step all the time, let me go in here. Sorry if I have to stop sometimes, but um, I have pre-programmed some, some of those lines on here. Um, with my Devilfish uh, 303, which is... Um, yeah, there, there is this wonderful person in Australia. I currently forgot his name. Um, who is uh, basically upgrading various machines, mostly the 909, the 808, and the 303, into devilfish versions. Um, and I had mine done, I think, who before, it was before the first collapse tour with Speedy J, which was happening actually in Australia in 2003, maybe, four, 2005, maybe 2005, I don't know. And so I have this since like 15 years. And honestly, um, since I didn't have much around me in the first six, seven months of the pandemic, I took this little beauty and I dove so deep into a 303. You wouldn't, you like, I, I thought I know a lot about the 303. I, I dove into this and I found things to do with it that I never really took the time before. So again, if you have a lack of inspiration, if you don't know what to do, just take one of your favorite sins and just dive even deeper into it and, 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 do some sounds with it and maybe that leads to something else let's just take it moment for moment so um let's see so here so we have this one while this is running time to read some of your comments to see where i'm at yeah, Fruity Loops is also a really good um, software that you can use. Can you still hear me talking while this music is running that loud? I'm sorry I have to continue to ask you that question. Can you? Yes, clear. I can count on you guys, that's great. Alright, so this is running now. Um, we have an atmosphere and look we even have a sample of the stigmata record in here we could maybe oh add the other one This is uh, uh, the uh, the loop that I programmed, and it's uh, sixth eighth loop. So it's uh, w w within within two bars. It, it basically has six notes. <laughs> Don't laugh, but you you know what I mean, right? So it has this little stumpy rhythm, which I always kind of like because it works well with. Uh, Okay, I like that. So this is the 303 how it sounds and it has a special sound because it's a devilfish 303 and it has like an overdrive. your comments and you were asking me how do I program a loop on this thing so let me show you how I program a loop on this thing is this the right camera angle here 303 let's see what we have here um, uh, let, let's get a um, let's get a bank where I have nothing well there's nothing important on there anyways but, but I want to stay away from deleting something well that's simple Okay, 
How do we program a 303? That's what you want to know? More 303. Is this legal? Yeah, it, we're still legal. By the way, I need, I need a little bit of coffee. Okay. Um, when I have this, I'll give you, I'll give you this little picture so you, you know that I'm still here, right? <laughs> All right. Um, three three. How do you program a three three? Was that the question? TD3 has a random option. Oh, by the way, yeah, the uh, update from the 707 I'll show you later has a random option as well, which is really cool. Um, okay, a loop on the 303. You, um, so far I, ha I have this on there now, yeah? So let's forget about this one. You clear that pattern, bam. And for each pattern you can have eight banks to, uh, uh, to, to store stuff. Um, I'm really lazy, so I'm just switching between banks and only use the first slot in order to, to record something. So I just delete that pattern by pressing this, and as you hear, there's nothing to hear anymore. You go into pitch mode, and since we want to stick to the root note C, um, let's just play something. Let's say... I played that. Now, you have to have a little imagination with the 303, the original one when you program it, because it was never intended to be the machine that it turned out to be. It was intended as, I guess, a bass, a company bass synthesizer for, for a guitar player. And the programming mode is not really that intuitive and it's not really, like, I mean, they did this in the 80s. They, I'm happy that they made this machine, but because without the machine, where would we be? Nowhere, right? Um, so I programmed some notes and you, you go out of the pitch mode. That means I've stored those notes that I just played. I go back into pitch mode and now I can play these notes. Okay, I go back out because I want to start in the beginning. Every time I go into pitch mode again, we're the first note. Okay, I'll hit the first note. And I want to have an accent on this note. Because I want to have accents on every note. You can have slides or accents on notes. Because obviously uh, the, the Devilfish 303 has an, has an accent decay and it has like so much more stuff that you can do with, 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 uh, with the accent. So you want to have accent on every note. Um, it, should, it should have programmed it the other way around that you have to take the accent off if you don't want it. But so we have to go through and do basically put an accent on each note. And just for fun, on the next note, I put an accent and a slide, right? So we'll put just accent on until I'm not sure when. See, we're in different territory already. So I go back into function, and now I can choose uh, how many steps do I want to do? And let's say, I, I, I think the, the default is 16 steps and I want to do eight steps. So I uh, count to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Um, that means I now have put accents on each note. We have eight steps. The only thing missing is the time signature. Like, where do you have it? If I want to just go like in a 16th step mode, or in that case, eight step mode, uh, here you have these three buttons on this side. Can you still see that actually? Yeah, I guess you can. Uh, you have these three notes and uh, uh, three buttons and one is like you hit the note on the note. One is, uh, oh, damn, I've never learned music or as you can see or noticed already, uh, musical terms. So this is a triplet note. I guess it puts it somewhere else on the, on the timeline. And this, so, um, and this is, this is skips a note. So. We have eight steps, so if I did like one, two, three, four, skip a note, five, six, seven, eight. And since we are at eight, it automatically jumps back to where we were. And now we should have a loop running. Let's see. And you hear, you hear the, the little gap we had? If we don't like that gap, we can go back into uh, time mode and it just hit eight times this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
little gap you're hearing now is uh, um, caused by the slide that I put. And if you want to hear, if, the, if I do the time mode like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just randomly hitting some buttons, um, we come up with random sequences. Which, with a little bit of imagination, you can kind of figure out what you're doing. Like time mode, let's do one note, one not note, note, no note, note, no note, note, note. See? Or we go the super easy way and just do 16th or 8th in that case. Ha! And if I want to get rid of that slide that I put in there, I can go back into pitch mode and there. Oh, I missed it. One, two. Where is the slide here? And I take the slide off. The slide is gone. Going back in here. That's running around. Okay, because this is not enough, what I can do with the 303 going in there, um, I can put, as I said, effects on it. And it's a padding effect. That's a really weird black hole effect. Let me see this. Can you see this down here? You know what? This thing is completely in the way. Oh, by the way, nowhere. I don't need this. Okay, I just disconnected the uh, K2 controllers since they're in my way here, and I'm not using them right now, anyways. Um, I might have messed up my sync. <laughs> You can, uh, hold on. you can see the HA thousand down here. Gives it a little bit of. It's a, it's a black hole plugin, and the black hole plugin, you you can you can buy as a plugin, uh, a plugin, yeah, a plugin like the same thing. Stick to this, this sounds cool. I'm just worrying a little bit about my, my sync here right now. Let me find out. Ha! Still working, I can't believe it. All right, let's go back into, you've seen that. So this is the, that's the effect that you can put on it. Interesting. You know, maybe people would say you shouldn't put any delay on, uh, or let's say reverb effects on a bass, but who makes those rules anyways? Um, this is nice, but since I found the, uh, the electric mistress in my in one of my boxes from uh, Electro Harmonix, which is essentially a, a chorus flanger filter type of thing. And for some of you, I was inspired to get that thing years ago from uh, Speedy J, Jochen Pop, who did a really famous release on Plus Eight. He basically restarted Richie Horton's Plus Eight label back in back in the day with this release. It was called Electric Deluxe. And he called his own label after that. So, uh, what what if you want to look for the Speedy J uh, track called? I think it's called Electric Deluxe on Plus Eight. If you want to check that out, he basically took a, a snare 
uh, roll from the 909 and ran it through this thing. We maybe can hook this up later on and I'll show you how, how it's done. But um, two weeks ago I thought, why don't I run the 303 through the thing? It may be a cool effect. So let's find out. I do like um, what is going on here. Whew. Oops. I do like I do like the one better that I programmed before on that one. It's very very similar. change oh the chorus tune right behind it here again I always like to pitch things down I don't know why okay quick question for you guys uh, since I'm kind of new to twitch if you're asking a question is that always is that always like uh, with an underlying pink color or a purple color in that case Ah, yeah, obviously. So the, my question is, if there's a question, is it always um, if uh, what? <laughs> ah, these cameras drive me nuts. Now the overhead camera isn't doing its thing. Okay. Okay, this is still there. Oh, it's not even that one. Oh, it turned off. That's why. All right, guys. Uh, let me go back to this one here. Hey, uh, quick question. Um, okay, not at all. It's something people redeem to highlight their message. Oh, so it's not it's not a question. But if you highlight it, I might see it as a question. Uh, hi, Chris. What's your rec recording software on a computer? You're recording by USB or MIDI or both? Um, I no 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 uh, I, I don't have any MIDI clips running so everything we're doing is basically sequenced on the machines right now maybe I change that later I have no idea but right now it's running solely on the machines so there's nothing um, coming in from there uh, there is no clips as you can see no clips on there right so uh, 
I run everything into my sound card and I control everything with Ableton Live. That's my sequencer in that case. It's like the sequencer on top of all these little sequencers that are running here. So everything runs kind of independent and then again not because um, uh, it's all connected with MIDI so it all she should be synchronized more or less uh, in a fluctuation. But you know, don't wait until it's perfect, just do it. Um, and there was another question. Um, I've been frustrated for months trying to get a good clean audio feed to my streams. Can you cover this topic at some point? Yes, I can talk that, cover that topic right now. Um, I'm using this computer here. <laughs> this next to you, like this computer there. Uh, can you see it from here? Hold on. This computer. See that? It's my analyzer. This is my studio computer, which is a which is this thing here from 2012, uh, Mac Pro, also called the trash can. And it kind of works like one too. Uh, actually with a new Catalina upgrade I did three, four months ago, I wanted to kind of throw it in the trash before this because I got so, I'm not getting frustrated if things don't work. Didn't I say that in the beginning? Um, uh, but, but it was just driving me nuts because sometimes you load projects and you just look at a rainbow ball turning for five minutes until something is happening um, or it randomly just crashed in the middle of something. Um, but since the new update, I have to give props to Apple when they, when they deserve it. Ev everything is working much better. But since this thing is from 2012, I still have to say it actually works really well. But I would not want to stream from that same computer that I'm working on music here right now for you guys as that would be too much for the machine so i'm using this laptop here uh, which is another macbook air um, to stream how do i get a clean signal for streaming was the question i do this because i have i mean i have to admit i in 20 years of djing as well i've collected quite some gear and uh especially sound interfaces like I, I don't know, a mountain of sound interfaces. And uh, at some point I've used a lot of RME, um, Firefaces, Hammer Falls, uh, you name it, USX, U, UC, um, and I still have like three of them. And I use one, which is a super luxury for my, for my uh, analyzer over here. And I use one for streaming. So essentially, I go with my sound out of the monitor uh, connection for my UAD into the RME and the RME is connected via USB to my streaming laptop and this is how I managed to get a sort of a clean signal also with my DJ sets towards you guys out there. Um, you need to have a good sound card and you need to set the levels right. Is that, did this answer your question? All right, let's get back to the music. Things are still running, that's good. Will this live be available f later on demand? I, honestly, I, <laughs> I have to speak to Beatport because I'm actually recording this. Oh, damn, am I already doing this for one and a half hours and we haven't got anywhere yet? that's a kick drum and a bass line. I'm so sorry. Is anybody still watching? Yeah, actually some people are still watching. Um, I'm probably going to put it on my YouTube site if Beatport allows me to, so you can watch it there. Go to, over to my YouTube site. Um, okay, let me find some more... Uh, if you have the question, you should... Yeah, we could have a class, a classroom where we can all, all do this. Sadly, not during these times. Okay, I'm, I'm new to Twitch, so can I read these comments later on when that stream is over? I can't, I guess, I can't. I, I have to read them live, right? Hey, is Kyle Geiger online? Kyle, are you, are you with us, Kyle? Are you? If so, send me a message. Uh, Kyle Geiger, by the way, has his own um, absolutely super fantastic... Uh, uh, I don't know, recording school online going on, which I totally recommend for everyone. Go on to Kyle Kiger's Facebook site. You find the, uh, um, you, you find all the uh, 
uh, infos there. And he was on our DJs and Beer show. And yeah, he is a guru. He's a total guru. And um, I'm hoping he's not laughing at me what I'm doing here. But I'm trying, guy. I'm trying, Kyle. I'm trying your footsteps to jump in your footsteps. Um, yes, Kyle Geiger is here. Where is he? Come on, Kyle. Send a message. Can I see you? Kai. I see a great release on 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 Tron Truncate's new work tracks work tracks label. Um, these messages are running by too fast. So Kyle is the guy. Yes. Anyways, check out Kyle. He's a super. Hey, Kyle, there you are. Uh, he's super inspirational. Kyle is such a, such a nice person and such an inspirational person and and such a great musician too. And he knows way more about the production process than I do, to be honest. Um, but it's not only about the production process. It is also about and that's obviously Kyle has that. Two, it's about your your attitude towards production, and if if there's maybe something I can give you on the way, it's maybe nothing like how to work with stuff. It's it's more the idea of if I can do this, you can do this. That should be the that should be the message of the night. Um. Anyways, shall we get back into music? All right. We have this running here. I was earlier I'm not mentioning a beer. We need like a beer. <laughs> oh, I need to get a beer at some point. Um, mentioning baking a cake, you need these ingredients. So what do we have here? We have a kick drum, we have some bass going, we have some sounds. Let's find more sounds. How about a bellish sound? Like I have this here. Maybe that's boring. Maybe we have that second stigmata thing running. At some point, automate this. And another pro tip of mine is wait with your percussions, like hi hats and rights. Same t same thing with the limiter. Just wait with it because sometimes you add hi hats and rights because you can't find something else to put it, to add, and it gives you something to do. But then you fill it up already with hi hats and, and rights, and it isn't really like. Maybe if it's inspirational for you, do it, but sometimes it keeps me from doing the fly sub it and going deeper into a machine and getting a really nice uh, sound going. Do I have a sound on the, on the sub 37? Yeah. Sub 37 is here as well, so just keep that in mind. There's machines out there that can still add some stuff. Um, talking about not adding <laughs> any 909 stuff, we could just have a clap running, a high end. And yeah, I didn't want to do that, sorry. But it already sounds like something that people could be dancing to, right? So let's just continue. Um, I'll, I'll set this to some sort of uh, setting that it can run in the background and we can kind of forget about it but it's running another thing that you always just try to go with the flow you just hear something you feel it just stick with it a little but as I said in the beginning, it's like producing is such an intimate process really. It's it's you and some machines and you're just doing stuff and you can do it for hours. And I could basically, I'll tell you, I could sit here for hours and just dial the frequency and resonance of the 101 thing here. And I would be happy. It just it's all it doesn't take much.
Look, this is the 101, man. It can get SCT as well, right? Let's change a little bit of the filtering and the um, flanger of the 303. Can we still hear that? Essentially, I'm flanging the flanger now. Um, let's turn down the volume a little bit. Um, I'm flanging the flanger. So if you don't have this flanger here, you still have a flanger here in Ableton Live, which maybe sounds different, but it also sounds good. And you can play around with that stuff. And I'm sure Kyle knows way more about this little flanger than I do. Again, to explain that to you, you do not need the machines that I have. You you need a laptop. That's that's it. Or you do have some machines. Just just be creative. Just find other ways to do those things that I'm doing here with these machines. Okay, let's get rid of that flanger again, and we go back to to this view. a little bit the difference you have hands-on control you know dedicated knobs you don't need to mouse to go somewhere that's a nice thing all right good question why do i need all these machines because it's fun because i have them because you can own machines, you know? It's not like that you don't need them if, because you can do it with all of the software. Um, it's Obviously, it's different. I'm just saying you don't need them to do music. You don't. You can have them, and it's fun to have machines where you can hands-on, but you can go simple as well. All right, let's continue this. Okay, next step would be I'm recording something, maybe we get into high hats and at 909 stuff too. I'm recording something and then we go at some point in the box and we continue to do talking yeah, We go in the box then once I've recorded something and we continue to go into the mixing session and a lot of people ask me about it, go into forming a kick drum because the kick drum that I have running now is literally just plain and super simple kick drum that can be done much better believe me so don't think that would be a kick drum that i would be happy with although it sounds good but still it can be better it always can be better all right
Oh, huh, that's good. So I can talk. This is my monitor outlet, so I turn this down and I can talk to you. The question was, how much of your creation process would you say is explorative and how much is you having in mind exactly what you want to do? Ooh, I would say 90 to 10. You kind of have in your head like what you want to do. Obviously, you want to create something for the dance floor, something that like gives you a vibe. Um, but never stick to that idea. Like always be happy to leave that road and go to completely somewhere else. You might, like I've used to do that mistake in the early days very much. There was one sound and I loved it. And then you just build everything around that sound, but somehow it wasn't working. And everything that you build around was working together. Just the sound wasn't working. You have to be willing to let go of that sound, no matter how much you love it. Let go of any idea that you might thought was good one hour ago. Just leave it behind you. Go into exploration mode while still knowing where you want to go, sort of, but be willing to adapt to wherever the flow takes you. So let me turn this up again and we see where this takes us. I found this really cool sound early on. I'm not sure if that fits. Oh. Okay. Of, this is too dry. Can you still hear me? Do I, do, do I need to yell now? Planetary Assault System remix of which was it? Which was it? It has a similar sound. You can look it up. It's um, if you hear people talking, it's by the way I have the window open. Um, it's outside. Um, the weather, Smith and Selway. Planetary Assault System remix has almost the exact same sound. Can someone? One of you check if, if I'm right. Yeah, you just said the volume is high. Go bold or don't go anywhere. Seriously, with making music. I've wasted so much time in my life adding track for track for track, finding half decent sounds that are kind of buried in the background because I wasn't too sure about it. Just delete them. Don't, don't, just don't use them. 
if you use a sound, it should be so good. It could be standing alone there, bold in your face, and then turn it up. If, if you're in a club and, this, and the beat is running and then this like huge sound is coming through and it just makes beep, that's all, that's all you need, really. It's like there's not much more to it. It's like if it's just a ooh sound, then just forget about it. You don't need that ooh sound. Maybe it gives a little bit of atmosphere in the background. That's a whole different thing. But if you have a lead sound, it should be bold in your face. Same thing with vocals. If you if you have a song track, whatever, get it bold. Mix the vocal in front. Don't mix it in the back. Why am I saying that? <laughs> because I'm telling that myself. Because as some of you know, I'm in the final phases together with Ralf Hildenbeutel of mixing my next album for Mute in the very final phase. Like we're literally done this week. There's some vocals on there. And believe it or not, there's even some people singing, sort of, sort of singing, not singing on there. No, actually, there are singing on there. And it took me a while to get used to this and just to be like, have the confidence to put this vocal up front. So it's like, bam, like be confident about it. Stand behind it. This is your thing. And uh, in that case, it's this sound. <laughs> Let's be confident about it. Maybe we listen to it tomorrow and say like, what the hell was he thinking? But um, for now, not much.
question I said that we don't need. Uh, first question is, did you hear me talking while this was running? And for those guys watching on Sunday, do you notice that everything's like sinking? The ghost is gone. Uh, you said we don't need the hardware to start, that all we can done by by a software and a computer. Yes. For example, I mean, there's Fruity Loops, which is great um, as a starting point and even as a pro. Truncate, for example, and other people I know have worked on Fruity Loops for ages and started their career with it. Ableton Live, I believe, is a great program. I use it myself since version 1.5, actually, we're with version 10. And it has currently a 90 day free trial with all the plugins that come with it. So, uh, and it's kind of intuitive, I would say. I mean, watch, we have YouTube, watch some tutorial videos, how to get started with Ableton Live and start simple. Oh, that's another good thing. Um, radio Slate, yeah, we all know and love him. And I'm a biggest Radio Slate fan uh, since the beginning of, I've heard his first music. His approach to music is so amazing. And what he told me once was also what I can tell you. It's like, if you want to get into music, you don't have any musical background, you don't have any uh, background in, in, in music production, start with edits. Um, get, get a software like Ableton Live, which is for free for now. Did I mention that before? Um, but there's free software out there too. Let's just, you, you're all in the chat here. You can talk to each other and, and, and ask each other. Um, Oh, with the music on, I'm a little bit too low, so I'm better turning it off. Uh, Bitwig, Bitwig Digital Audio Workstation, or DA. I find the word DA so weird. Um, let's say Digital or, uh, Workstation. Bitwig is a great, great company and great, great software as well. Um, maybe you shouldn't start with Logic Pro. That's <laughs> a little bit like uh, too pro, maybe. Um, but you can get that, and then, like Radio Slave said, get some. Do some edits of your favorite techno tracks, house tracks. Just put them in there, chop them apart, rearrange them. And then you start slowly by maybe like, oh, maybe I'll get this sound out and put them on another track. And you put it on another track and then you rearrange, you sequence that sound a little different. And then maybe you add a delay on it and, and some other effects plugins. And you learn which effect plugins does what. And then suddenly you end up with a whole new remix of a track. Um, or an edit of a track and this is how Radio Slave started his career. He just made loads of edits of tracks and every time he was playing somewhere he was playing his own edits. Uh, Deep Dish did the same thing. Deep Dish, Ali, Dubfire, you all know him. Um, when they when they DJed somewhere they, they were just solely playing their own edits and everybody on the dance floor was like I know this track but I don't know this version what's going on. Um, uh, it's, it's a great way to learn. It's a really great way to learn because you have instant sort of success, you know, you have something musical running and it doesn't take much to understand where you can cut things out, put them back in. Um, uh, that's a good way to start. Uh, okay. I'll let this run a little bit and I'll read your comments and then we, and then we get into you know, we have open end, but we don't want to take take it too long. So let's aim for another hour, one and a half hours, maybe, and because I still want to get into the box. And for those who are wondering, um, uh, next Tuesday, we do the same thing again, because it's two dates that I'm doing this. Uh, so this is the first one. Next Tuesday at seven is the second one. And maybe we'll go into part two of the same thing, or we do something completely different. I have no idea. <laughs> since was the DX7, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, again, sh can I talk when this is all this is running or should I just keep my mouth shut?
asking the questions about compressors and the use of compressors, um, why that is important, or what is my favorite compressor, or what color of compressor, um, we get into this once I get into the box, right? Because I don't have any hardware compressors here. I have two distressors. They're actually downstairs, locked away in a box. But I have them as plugins now too, so <laughs> I was too lazy to get them. Um, we'll get to the compressors and the mixing stuff a little later. So this is solely first about just getting things started, getting the fun of it, like using the machines. We record a little bit and then we get into the box and we, we talk more about um, uh, use of compressors and, and, and plugins that form the sound. Right now we're not at that stage. Right now no compression is needed. Right now no EQ is needed. Right now none of that stuff is needed. Right now you might want to have effect plugins that give you delay, reverbs. Um, that's the most uh, important flanger right now here for my 303. Um, these are, let's say, outboard or plugins that you could use for that part of a production process. Once you got stuff recorded, um, and the way I do it is basically overdubbing. You see it later. It's like we record each individual output of the, of the 909 and I'm, I'm working in um, uh, arrangement mode, not in session mode of Ableton Live. Uh, so we already have an arrangement at some point. You'll, you'll see. Hold on. Um, Kyle, you were writing something. <laughs> Kyle, thank you. He says, uh, damn. This camera is turning off randomly. Now it's back on. But it, ra it randomly turns off. It says USB connected, but it's not. So come back. Thank you. Um, I have to, to, turn, to turn off the automatic uh, shutdown thing. Um, anyways, I was speaking to you while you weren't seeing me, but it's not really important to see me. Uh, Kyle just wrote me that... <laughs> Thank you, Kyle, for the nice message. That's uh, um, that's very nice of you. Okay. <laughs> hey, Justin. Our Juice Productions Justin is watching. Uh, the man who runs our DJs and beers show. So everybody say hello to Justin. And we're working on some more of these kind of... Um, uh, 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 sessions. I kind of start to enjoy these sessions too. So let's continue. Where were we? Um, I wanted to say something, but I forgot. I think I did. Let's continue, continue letting the loop run because you let it run and you hear and you know, you do other things in the background, you drink a coffee and some, sometimes you pick out that idea. Oh, we could use this. We could use that. Sometimes also good to turn off stuff. Too. J is doing also these fantastic streams. He has the not Twiddler thing going on, and uh, he has his uh, kind of a DJ talk show as well. And I'm probably going to be on there at some point. Um, Jochum and I keep missing each other for some reason. We need to we need to meet up. What do I uh, use? 
used to sync all my machines. Yes, uh, Ableton Live is my master, and since the MIDI via my little MIDI tech MIDI interface to all these machines and back, so I can play here too. If I could. XD, find the Audis, it's XD something. Um, they're really nice uh, headphones. Um, but why I'm using those really nice headphones is because it's in connection with this little thing here. And it's a Smith Realizer, which is a system where you can emulate rooms. You know what I mean? If you em emulate a room. So in my old studio with my really nice speakers that are one floor be below me right now, um, the MV2s, and if you haven't watched from the beginning, you might wonder, like, why are they not here in this room? Because neighbors and um, downstairs, I, I, I have this sort of club now. So um, I put them there. But in my old studio, because I wanted to keep, to preserve the studio sound that I had, I got this Smith Realizer system, which recorded. We had little microphones in your ear. You were sitting in your sweet spot and you went through uh, like noises and it recorded um, the room virtually into this machine and it recreates it on these headphones. So if I close my eyes, literally close my eyes and let this run now, I can still see my speakers standing in front of me in my old studio. And it's, I would almost say 95% accurate. So it's pretty amazing. And this is how I mix too. Like I, I produce on them, I mix on them. Sometimes if they're too heavy, I'm using those beauties, which are campfire audios in ear headphones, which the beautiful com for company, I got to get a shout out to them, campfire audio uh, in Portland, Oregon, sent them to me. They're so nice. And they, that really like changed the pandemic time for me because all the walks that I do in Frankfurt, I do with these headphones and you hear music in a whole different level, but they are really pricey. So thanks campfire audio. Um, uh, so essentially, if I let this run, I still, I'm still sort of sitting in my old studio. You, one might ask the question, why would you still need a studio then if you close your eyes and you have that? Well, it's only 95% accurate, I would say. Sometimes you miss those 5%. And, you know, you want to maybe sometimes listen to music with other people or don't have big headphones on and have the room and the ability to like just listen to without headphones. Maybe I'll sell my speakers at some point. I don't know. Okay, turn, up, turn my mic up. I can turn my mic up, absolutely. But I don't want to distort. So if I distort, you tell me. If these are the levels, can you still hear me? <laughs> and then later on I move it to the right spot. Be creative. Oh, these LCD XC, that's right. Thank you. That's the headphones. Oh, 
have another sound coming in. Something on the MC-707 again. When are you coming to Los Angeles, Guy? That, that, that's a really, really good question. I really hope it's sooner than later. over the music, that's great. Even if I'm yelling. Accidentally, happy accident. I accidentally hit this button here and I had this sound on that thing on that track. Get the pad in. The pad still sounds too clean, but we can fix this later. back to Seattle. Oh, that's a good thing. I turn off the music for that one. If you really want to support the artists that I play and support and even support myself in a way, because we're out of a job right now, uh, go to my Mixcloud Select page um it's uh, three euros 99 a month and you get <laughs> fucking ridiculous amount of music for that and you get all my mixes that i release on am fm without me talking it's like so you don't hear you have to hear this all the time why am i talking to <laughs> i'm sp looking at my mic i should be looking at you um so mix my mix Cloud select page has all my streams and a mastered version downloadable on your phone am i selling stuff here right now let's continue to make this That little accident is great. You need to have little accidents. I really love that MC707 thing. That is really cool. The question was, what's the machine under the 909, which uh, all those cables that you see here um, go into into that? It's, it's again, I have to say that because it's a beautiful, great company which I which supported me over the years so amazingly. And they're a small company from Bulgaria. I visited their headquarters in Sofia, and they're just a bunch of nice people. They're so good. It's Antelope Audio. It's this beautiful microphone is from Antelope Audio. You can see it in action again on Thursday. Um, and uh, they do these absolutely insanely fantastic, I know they're a little pricey too, but insanely fantastic sound interfaces that are so incredibly stable and the best sounding sound interfaces that I've ever listened to in my life.
spoke about the... You still hear me? You still hear me? Um, since we spoke about the uh, machine under the 909, which I'm using to essentially um, convert the analog signal of the 909 into a digital signal that can be used by my computer, let's add some high ends and some, some stuff, shall we? Symbols. You have a row of symbols here. Turn them off, turn them on. There's definitely people who are much faster with a 909. I can think of one or two names already. Um, but it's not about how fast you are, it's what comes out of the speakers, right? Right now at least. So, um. Let's get 16 going, come on. What's going on? Why is one missing here? That sounds really, really dry yet, but trust me, something is coming out of this. If it's a little bit off sync, don't worry about it. It'll get there eventually. Oh, we have to restart. To this screen here a good way to find out if you are not synced let's give you a little little trick here uh, let's solo this we don't even need a kick drum but we can do this um, so we have it sounds it sounds kind of synced but if you really want to know if it's if it's super super good well synced we'll just do a little loop here come on now it's and then we just record, record the sound and see that. This should be here. So my 909 is too fast. Let's go into preferences, open the MIDI. My 909 is on MIDI output two. I'm not sure why. Let's go back to minus 80. Look, and while I move this, you can see my hi-hat moving to the back. See? A little bit too much now. Oh, that's pretty good. So we're at 72. Before it was on 90. Someone really explained that to me. I don't know. Okay, we keep it like this. We don't need this recording.
Okay, we're in the next step. <laughs> it's always funny when you turn this everything off. It's a lot. There's a lot of stuff running, right? Um, obviously, this is just stuff running, so we have to record it and we have to clean it up. But before we start to record it, uh, what I would normally do now, and this is what we're doing now, I'm kind of trying to learn what's going on here and, and what possibilities I have um, before I record. Um, uh, Radio Slave doing kind of a similar thing sometimes. He, uh, not all the time, he has a lot of MIDI controllers in front of him and he explained it to me when he did the remix for me for uh, Card House, which will be out at some point too. Uh, he, he, he puts everything on his MIDI controller, every like effects and, and, and volumes and everything, and then he learns it because every time he needs to learn a new layout and then you learn it and you play around with it. While you play around, you get ideas and you get familiar with your faders, which fader is, is uh, mapped to what plugin. And once you learn it, then you can start record. And that's our next step. Let's, I just, without any comments, though you're not gonna hear me talk now, I'm just gonna play around with that stuff for a while now without recording anything. I'm just gonna play around, maybe sounds like a weird live set and uh at some point i listen to your comments too at some or read your comments but i'm just going to play around with all the machines now yeah just in order to see what's going on to learn what works and what doesn't work and then eventually we'll record it into the daw <laughs> and uh and then i'll uh, get some kick drum action going but don't forget we have part two next week so we Still got to keep some stuff up. All right, let's play some music. So I'm going to turn off the mic for now. And maybe I'm going to get a beer. The volume levels are okay. I'm still not really in the red on my master at Ableton. I'm a little loud on my output on my sound card here. Right, and so you don't hear my moving around with the chair, I'm gonna turn off my mic now.
case you're wondering, I just uh, I, I I recorded the second line of my uh, I recorded a program the second line on the on the 303, which has a little bit more of a, a trippy feel to it. A trippy feel. Let's let's get a little trippier then. And it, it doesn't mean that I'm abandoning the other one. I can record both, right? You can overdub and overdub and record and use like in, in that way you have ten 303s if you want them to.
read some of your comments and one was asking the question can you use the 303 and not have it like asset of course you can um i i um i think it was actually created not for the reason to be an asset machine it was created solely to be a base synthesizer um so that's what it's supposed to be done but if you turn up the resonance and the cut of frequency accordingly then you get these acid sounds uh it's a setting thing um and uh, uh yeah you can that's the thing don't really put yourself in a box and limit yourself like use any machine for anything that you think it could be usable for um even the weirdest ideas like there's literally no uh, there is no rules and we, sh we should not make any rules, right? So how about this now? Uh, my coffee is pretty cold. Uh, I still have some water, but how about I get a beer and then with the beer, um, I'll record some stuff into my computer and then we uh, are going to go and check out some of those plugins that I'm using to do bass drums and kick drums with. Again, we have another session next week. We're going to go deeper into that, but I at least want to touch the subject for now. So we record something as soon as I have my beer, right? And I'll leave you with some, some of that in the meantime. <laughs> and I see the... Uh, the sync ghost is back. I hit stop and start and the sync destroy my sync ghost is back. Hold on. Let's mute that. What is going on? Okay, once more. Back in sync. Not really. And uh, and it's just a, it's just a 909 again. Uh, all right, let's let's do this trick again and see why my 909 is so off again. Oh my god! All right, let's go back to where were we? 80. Apparently my 909 decides to, like, I don't know, from time to time to just get out of sync and, and have some other milliseconds going on. It's alive. Let's see where we are. So here you can see. See what I mean? This is where we want to be. Around there. And you can perfectly see the fluctuation now of, of the 909, of the Mini 909. See, you know, it's, it's too fast, it's too slow, it's completely all over the place. Come on, it's an old machine. As long as it's sort of there, it's okay.
disappear, huh? So it's 7.5 volume percent, so um, I better record fast because I'm probably going to be kind of drunk then. Pandemic series. Can with the lowest oxygen increase by, what does it say? Anyways, with passion and 150 centimeters distance, pandemic series, and we celebrate, it's a mute beer, isn't it great, a mute beer, it's really, really, really tasty. Alright. Cheers guys. The smell of this beer. Get a starting point. I got all this. I got all that. Uh, we maybe have it synced or maybe not. Let's find out. worry about this right now we know there's a little syncing issue we know MIDI has its limitations uh, so we don't worry about it now I'll record anyways and we can move things around once we have the recordings so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit record you have the beatboard logo up on top of there I hit record basically with all those tracks the rim shot obviously the model one uh yeah who knows maybe i'll just do one sub 37 thing in there here and there um of course the mc 707 okay i armed all these these tracks now i turn off the loop here i have a long enough thing running the kick drum is running for over seven minutes that should be totally sufficient to get some sort of loop going and let's just let's just record something here we go
I say I didn't want to go in the red in my master? Oh, look at that. Well, you know. I maybe better turn on the <laughs> turn on the limiter. Sounds a bit better. As you can see now on my DAW, um, all those uh, pan, all those recordings, switch into over here. Oh, 
you can see them. All those recordings can again obviously be chopped up, rearranged, uh, and whatever. I mean, obviously, sources like, uh, for example, everything that's coming from the Model 1 mixer, which I highlighted here, is multiple stuff at once. That's the 101 and the 303 together. But I have the snare separate, I have the hi-hat separate. That's what you essentially call multi-track recording, I guess. Uh, I have those things separate. I have the sub-37 spontaneously included in the mix. Doing this. Interesting that your wife likes to listen to this kind of music driving a car. I'm not entirely sure if you yet can call this music, but it's at least some sort of loop. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I do have everything separate in, in a way. Look, this is the analog rhythm. I mean, I could, if I wanted to, just record that stuff uh, single. So, by the way, if you haven't noticed it, we're inside the box now. Everything outside here is gone. We left it behind us. Um, so, let's collapse all this. And we're almost nearing the end, but let's add an another half an hour. We're at 30 minutes now, right? in order to work a little bit on the kick drum and then we dive into this next week. So I'll find a good loop somewhere. Seven oh seven. Seven oh seven is doing this. My beer is here. important when you start working on the kick drum is that you obviously have some sort of bass as a reference running not only tune wise also vibe wise and so you know what you need so I, I picked out this loop here now um, and as I told you my kick is running up here it's a MIDI file um, but it comes from a wonderful machine named Punchbox. Bam! Here we go. This is the Punchbox. Mm.
Yes, I did record the 909 from individual outs to separate tracks and not the 909 as one track. This gives me the uh, opportunity to move everything around as I want it uh, and it's a much nicer thing. But I do have the luxury because I have a dedicated sound interface for the 909, which is my replacement sound interface for my DJing. And I connected it with ADAT to my uh, Universal Audio sound interface. So I have these additional 16 channels. Yeah, ADAT, ADAT is 16 channels, 8 in, 8 out. Is it six? No, 16 channels? And um, maybe I'll do the same thing with the other machines too. Because obviously the, nine, the 707 has individual outs. But I don't really have that many inputs in my, in my sound card. So it's a routing thing, but sometimes you don't really need everything separate. It's good to commit yourself at times to uh, commit yourself to a certain sound and you stick to it and then you work with it. Um, how I sync all the hardware, you should have been here from the beginning. And then I told you I was with, actually talking like 30 minutes through from the beginning. All right, let's get into the punch box and I'll show you a little bit how I um, Yes, the, ma the uh, master clock comes from Ableton Live here. Um, you can connect the MC707 USB and have all the channels in Ableton. I know this. I haven't done it yet. You're right. I should look into this. I'm lazy. I'm going uh, left and right out. But again, I have to tell you, I just set this up essentially on Friday and Saturday uh, this way. And maybe next week I've set it up completely different again because obviously I like to lie under tables and have dirty cables in my hand. Um. Oh, hey, Chris, do you have a tip when you, my techno tracks always end up too melodic? Oh, that's something that ha doesn't happen to me because melodies uh, and techno sometimes don't, for me, don't really go that well together. Uh, Chop, chop your melodies apart like you have your melody just like loop it short get rid of notes that you feel like you don't need at some point and then take it from there like go minimal like just just go to the bare minimum um all right before i keep talking let's let's work on the 909 here uh on on the punch box the punch box is d16 i totally can recommend that uh, plugin because it's uh, actually quite cheap i think Correct me if I'm wrong, some of you might have a look at on the D16 website. I do believe it's 70 euros or something like this, and you cannot go wrong with this thing. So let me show you. Um, again, I do something that I told you don't do it, but I do it anyways. But it's not really affecting the limiter right now anyways. So this, I just realized I have my speakers on I think my neighbors are happy now uh, oh I had the speakers on so maybe you were you couldn't hear me really or oh, with a loop behind me I don't know uh, anyway sorry about that 80 euros awesome plugin yeah if Beatport allows me I'm gonna have this whole show I'm gonna talk them into it, you know. I'm 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 just gonna put it on my YouTube channel, but I need to ask them first, right? Because I'm, I'm nice. And remember, in about I don't know soon, I'm gonna give you a WeTransfer link with all these 22 Stigmata loops that we started the whole show with today. That kind of brought us where we are right now. I still have some beer. Good time to drink that beautiful mute beer, which again I got at Brauschil here in Frankfurt. They just distributed, but this batch of mute beer, um, well, it's not. It's called mute, but it's from a company called Schloss Romrod, from Romrod, was Romrod. It's a little little village near here, and I don't. It's the mute series, not the label, and. Um, they only do small batches, so that's it. I bought the rest, anything that was left over, I bought. And I only have like three cans left. And for you guys, I just, or for me, actually, I celebrated this by opening one, one of those cans. 
Mm. This is a whole meal in itself. Where were we? We were at... Yeah, free loops. You're gonna get free loops. Yeah, I could, I could, I could basically just bounce out all that stuff here and give them to you, and you do your tracks till next week. I don't know. Let's let's find out. But I'll give you those stigmata loops first. Um, punch box. So we have an 808. We have a 909. We can go sample based, uh, which. Uh, You can choose different samples, but I, I don't really like the sam uh, go sample based, but there are great samples in there. The 909 engine is almost like, I mean, it's better than the, the 909 to be honest, because when it comes to kicks, can you still hear me talking while the kick drum is running? Give me a yes, please, in the comments. Thank you. Vladimir, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, when it comes to kick drum, you might wonder why I'm not using my real 909 for the kick drum. Um, because honestly, those digital generated kick drums that made analog are way, they're just straighter. When it comes to kick drums, you wanna have something that pulls through. I mean, nothing against the original 909 kick drum, but this is just like for today's producing the kick drum needs to be a stable, full-on thing in the front, and I just love what D16 did with this. Same with the 808. Like, listen to this. It's just, it's just constantly the same sound, and it's and it's really nice. So, for we were listening to an 808 while I was doing this, but who cares? We'll switch it to a 909. It's a good start, so we take the 909. Let's take a little bit of decay away, and we'll listen it together with the bass. sounding good starts kick drum but let's see what we can do with it I mean everything is already on we have you have these little things here that help us it's clicks tops tools kick here's the main thing the kick and then you can put tops and clicks and tools on top of it show you turn them off so if you want to have a little bit more attack on your kick drum you can, for example, add this and uh, make it shorter. Use a different sound as your kick. Get it from more mono. Well, it's not gonna do too much. Let's get a low cut going because we don't want to have any any of the low frequencies on here. Um, what are the tops doing? See, that gives you a little bit of top. Let's take away the... Sometimes it's good to have something on the kick drum that like pulls it through the mix. Um, here can you even choose the sample start. See, that's another little trick that uh, makes your kick stand out a little fatter. If you have two kicks, which I'll show you in a second, or you have something on the kick, play around with, with where the sample is on top of your kick drum because as you can see the sample startup I move it back for forward and only because I change where it is location wise it changes the sound I kind of like that let's, let's stick to this for now but let's not let's tune it down let's have it way shorter and let's high cut it a little bit what does the tools do you hear that, that the tools give you a little bit of an extra um, mid-range punch. Again, here you can change the sample start and you can hear how the sound of the kick drum is changing. Hear that? 
Oh, you can do so much stuff with this. And I can change again. I can change the sample that is used in order to create that sound. Let's stick to the one we just had. I forgot which one we had. Let's use that one. And mono it. We don't need the stereo on the kick. Shorten it. It gives a little bit of a... Yeah, that kind of is pretty cool. Do we need distortion on here? Obviously yes, because it sounded good with the distortion. What, what can the distortion do? Let's see. Obviously distorting. We keep the dynamics at low. The contour is soft, hard. You hear the difference? Let's stick around, stay around there. And the distortion is a little darker. I mean, what what question is that? Of course, darker. And here we can do this. But I see it's clipping a little bit. The output is clipping, so let's turn that a little bit down here. And we get it back up there. Do we need the equalizer? We turn it up here. How is the limiter happening? Oh, we're way, we're so good. Look, look at that. The limiter is not even having a, to do anything right now. Um, let's go back here. So, so this is all nice and good, right? Sounds good. So, sounds fine already. It's a really quick, really, really, really quick walk through the uh, the Punchbox uh, plugin. Um, but we have more. I have more. Okay, there's two more. Well, let's say three more, four more plugin companies that I really want to mention because they're so good. Um, the first one would be, which I've already mentioned, uh, be, I mean, besides D16, who does the bunch punch box, um, the first one I mentioned earlier on already is Fab Filters. Fab Filters plugins are right here. Fab Filters plugins are just totally amazing. And I, and I somehow I, I think everybody's using them. I've, I've used the, the limiter already. Uh, you have really cool EQs where you can. hear me when I talk like this over the music or is the music too loud oh yeah you can always use some cowbells I completely forgot I'm sorry should have used some cowbells yep we can hear you thank you thank you thank you thank you um, so that's already a cool sounding kick drum another plug-in company that I want to mention is isotope we don't really use it right now this is more for mixing and mastering and vocal recording and stuff like this isotope does absolutely insanely good stuff but we get to this next week um then we have sound toys which i totally love but we don't really need any of those plugins right now because we want to get to plugin alliance and i'm one of the biggest fans of Plugin Alliance because it's insane what these guys are doing. And I show you a couple of things now. I'm using. Am I yelling, by the way? Am I coming across as distorted? I'm sorry, I'm asking. No, it's the, the mouse is acting up because of the, the, the Bluetooth thing. Because my phone is like that. Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm okay, good, thank you. Alright, um, I have this focus 
Strike console on there. This is also Plugin Alliance. Um, amazing. Like it's just a channel strip in a way, but it's a really cool channel strip. Let's see what the compressor is doing. Let's compress the kick drum a little bit. Not too much. Just a little bit like this. Um, I don't want to really use anything else of this uh, EQs because I have a better EQ. What is a better EQ? A better EQ is a better maker EQ. Yes, there's such a thing. This. Like, if I... The discovery of last four weeks for me is this EQ. It's kind of based on a Pultec EQ, but it doesn't have the Pultec characteristics. Some might say also uh, limitations because uh, uh, Pultec has its colors and it starts to distort. This is a really clean, super smooth, yet really gripping uh, EQ. Really well for anything, really. Also for kick drums. So, look, if I only just put it on there, it sounds already better. Like, without, with. You don't really hear much difference. What I hear is... Is the weird attack that I don't want. I don't want that attack. Is the tune right? Like, do never underestimate tuning your kick to your kick uh, to your uh, bass line. So, since we were in the root note C, I believe we're we're pretty good here. Leave it as it is. I need new duct tape because my microphone is falling off again. Um, another another quick tip is start start from like from the beginning and slowly make your way forward. Like once you're happy with the sound of your kick drum, leave this alone. Because once you start putting a console on here, an EQ, and some other stuff, you can go back to your punch box and do minor changes. But those minor changes will affect the, 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 the plugin chain that you've just created in quite a major way. So anything that, that you feel like you want to change, do it before you start processing your signal. Because otherwise it gets totally out of hand. So, so do small steps, but be sure for, with each step that you're fine with it, and then go on for the next one. So, um, get rid of the punch box, it's running. It sounds like a proper kick. It's maybe a little bit dull, it could use a little bit of an attack, but, we, but I don't like the attack on the punch box. In this case, usually it's great, but in this case, maybe not. So, we'll work on it EQ-wise. And I usually EQ before I do any other processing because the processing should also process the EQ'd uh, sound. I mean, nothing against EQing the sound after you process it. Processing, I mean, with uh, compressing or saturizing or whatever you do with it. You can obviously EQ it later on too. No rule against that. But um, it's usually better to start first EQing and then processing. So let's see what this thing does. Um, we'll get this to, let's say, around, I always like it around like 70, 69 hertz. Hear that? I exaggerate. It's, if you go sharp or wide, that means you're on that frequency that you chose or you're way around that sheet frequency that you chose. Usually also known as the Q factor. If the Q factor is high, you're really close to what you're doing. If the Q factor is low, you're all over the place. Um, this is the EQ1, which is basically for uh, the range between 45 hertz, one kilohertz, and from 65, uh, 650 hertz to 15K. Like we could uh, maybe even add 5K to our kick. And 
it will affect our attack, obviously. Like exaggerate it. Find the sweet spot. Stick to it. And then we get into the pull tech section, which is this beauty here. You can choose 60 cycles, 100 cycles, 30, 20, which essentially is the same as the frequency. So let's, we already like gain. Hold on, I just see something on my analyzer. Which is, we have a lot of low end going on. So let's get rid of that low end because we don't need it by turning up that dial. See, no low end, a lot of low end. Of course we want to keep some low end because it's the vibe, but we don't really need to have it in the 25 hertz region. This is a roll off, so we'll keep it there. With a kick drum, usually I try to um, not low cut it because I'm trying to use a kick drum which doesn't need to be low cut, like, like the nine, original 909. The original 909 has essentially its peak around 60 in that case, 60. Well, that, that's depending on the note we're at. Um, it's already a good sounding kick drum. All right. So, look. Off. You hear the rumble in the background. The rumble doesn't really help anything. It takes away energy out of the speakers. Uh, your, your bass sounds muddy and rumbled. So clean up your bass and leave the space for the essential elements. In this case, it's obviously the kick drum. So I turn it on. You hear the difference? In case you have speakers that do let you hear the difference. Much better with this in place. Get that back to this. We could boost 60 hertz here. Whoa, do you hear that? That's insane. Such a good sounding EQ. And here you can choose the bandwidth. Again, this is sharp, broad. We want to stick to a little bit sharper because we, we don't want to affect um, adjacent the next one here's the next one I'm just checking your comments sometimes here's the next plugin that just like I don't know I have it sometimes on every channel it's such a good plugin it's so good and it's called BAM black box all right so let's turn it off and listen to what we have soloed that is our kick turn the black box on just with nothing like totally neutral hear that off on no the punch box is from d16 a d16 group is a google d16 and punch box and you'll find that um the better maker is from plugin alliance brainworks brainworks bx BX um, plugins are just so good. We get into all these plugins next week, okay? Tune in next week and we do this like way more depth. I, I've used so much time today to just uh, uh, do this outboard stuff. So do you hear Do you hear this? This is, this is just the black box here. Off. It's kind of like wobbly everywhere. Now you should need some good speakers or good headphones to hear that. But maybe you can hear that on your consumer headphones too. I turn it on with no setting and it just turns the waveform of the kick drum into something coherent and and unified. 
electrifying somehow. Listen to this. Hear that? Way more punchier. So, but what can we do with it? We can saturize the signal. Whoa. Obviously, don't be fooled by the change of volume. So we can saturate the signal and take the output signal a little bit back. Okay, so here we are. This is without the black box. With the black box. Really, 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 really cool. So we have the pentode and the triode, which I've learned one time what they do, but don't ask me. They do stuff. Like just play around with them. Isn't that nice? So we add a little bit of this. We add a little bit of triode. And we take the volume down a little bit. And there we have the clean kick drum without the black box and the processed kick drum, which is like, that's already pretty cool. Let's listen to it with the rest. what we did today um, I think that's a good end point we we just barely touched uh, we just hi we just barely touched how we work in the box obviously this is all sounding still very messy and I still need to check where where my 909 sync is I'm actually just looking at it right now um, you know you can do so much with uh, now processing each individual track. You kind of already have an idea. You have you have moments. I mean, if you do it really concentrated and take your time, not like I did today, uh, you can you can already sort of have a really nice arrangement going on for six, seven, eight minutes, maybe even longer. Just ask Radio Slave, and. Uh, and already have kind of an arrangement going. And obviously while you're playing live, you're doing some mistakes, but since you're recording more or less each, uh, like multi-tracking each, each sound separate, you can not only process them afterwards, you can move them wherever you need and you can clean up your mix in a way. Uh, let's, let's work on that next week. Um, uh, maybe I have some other ideas until next week to do this. And, um, uh, we'll definitely get more into mixing kick drums because there's another uh, thing that I absolutely didn't go into today. Uh, and now for those who are still here with me, as promised, I'm going to give you 
a WeTransfer link with all these 22, uh, let's go on Twitch here, with all those 22 loops that are sampled from the loop record. So essentially I'm giving you this record now. With 22 samples, uh, 22 loops, all at 133.3. Oh, I got to log in here. Um, uh, you still with me? Yeah. Um, hold on, I um. Let me go into my Twitch. Since I forgot my password, I needed to get a code in order to get in there. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Beatport official. There we go. All right, here's the link for all those. Official. There we go. All right, here's the link for all those. For all those loops, there we go. go and grab right, them. Here's the link for all those you see that? For all those loops, there we go. go and grab right, them. Here's the link for all those you see that? For all those loops. Yeah, Glock78, thank you so much. Um, for all those loops. Yeah, Let me open that link. Glock78, thank you so much. Um, I didn't even yeah. know that's on there. Yeah, exactly. These are those loops. Um, I didn't Glock even know that's Thank you yeah, so exactly. much. These um, are those now loops. download them. Um, I've recorded them, normalized them, didn't do anything yeah, else with so them. They're obviously now they're now like from a 20 year them, old, normalized them, didn't do anything else with them. 16. What, released on October 18th? What? That was two days ago. 16 years. on October 18th? That's great. That was two days ago. 16 years and two days ago that record was released. I can't believe it. 16 years and two days ago that record was released. I can't believe it. 16 years and two days ago that record was released. I, I can't believe it. What was it? Where was it? Glock 78 for this. Um, so 16 year and two day old loops I just sent you with the V-transfer link. So find it, find it on there, my V-transfer link. Loops I just sent you with the V-transfer link. So find it, find it on there, my V-transfer link. Mr. Orange and L, let me uh, just have a look into your, I still have some beers. Mr. Orange turn up whenever you want. Just have a look into your, I still have some beers. Mr. Orange turn up whenever you want. Are you, have a look into your, I still have some beers. Mr. Orange whenever you want. Are you actually a teacher, help people produce? You explain stuff really great. Are you actually Thank you. That is, that is such a nice thing to hear because it is essentially kind of the first time I've this. It is such a nice thing to hear because I've just been watching Kyle Geiger. It is such a nice thing to hear because I've just been watching Kyle Geiger. Yeah, thanks for all of you who stuck with me for those three and a half hours by now. Johan, thank you for your help. David, everyone from Beatport for having me. Super, super nice. We're going to be back next week. Super, super nice. We're going to be back next week. Next week, uh, uh, yeah. What is it? 7 p.m. Uh, 7 p.m. Next, next week. Uh, if you uh, yeah, want to, you can watch DJs and beers again uh, on Thursday with Duckfire Radio Slave, Truncate, Drum Cell, and myself. I just realized I'm the only guy in this panel who who uses his original name. I just realized I'm gonna ask these guys on Thursday why that is that case. Let me read some of the messages here. Let me read some of the um, messages here. Oh, um, mute Twitch. Um, am I? Am I running? Oh. Mute Twitch. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. Am I? Um, am I running? Apparently, oh, there's sound going oh, on. There's oh, sound I'm going sorry. on. Okay, I'll turn that down. Do I have to say everything again now because there was? Uh, <laughs> I'm so new to this. There was more going on. Uh, how to download? I. Again, here, here is, here is the link. I'll send you the link again. Here is the link. You, you need to find in the chat. You need to find my name and the link. There's the link again. I just posted it again. I'm not sure where else to post it. I'm not sure if I can pin a post or something like this. Can I, if I knew I would do it.
Oh, we had a feedback loop going on. Okay, so, so let me start again. Thank you all for joining in here with me. Um, it was a lot of fun to do this. Um, I hope you weren't bored. Um, thank you, Beatport, uh, Johan, David, everyone at Beatport for having me to do this. We'll be back next week at 7 p.m. Sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I was in a feedback loop before. Uh, and yeah, it was probably really trippy. I need to listen to this again. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, of course, I'm sending my uh, the output signal of my computer into the sound card. At some point, things get like really out of hand and complicated with all the routings going on here, even in a small improvised studio setup like this. Um, there is more comments. So you do, you did grab my link, the WeTransfer link. And it's great that I didn't accidentally send you the wrong link with uh, where the latest mixes of my album are on, <laughs> because I've been sending this to the label. Mute records. <laughs> Did I mention that this is the best label in the world? Go bold and don't go anywhere. Exactly. You have to be willing to let go too. That's some lessons I've really learned in the last six, seven months here in this pandemic. Um, if it was a little bit too chaotic, I'm sorry for this. Uh, I have no script and I usually never really know what I'm doing. Yeah, for those who missed it, I paste again the link here. All right. So I'm not sure if I can still see those comments once I turn this off because I, when I stream on Twitch, oh no, it's limited. So it's on real time and you need to let go. Yeah, you need to learn how to let go, right? Back high to Denver and Colorado, that was great. Chaos is good. Chaos is creativity. Any studio you see where it's super clean and everything is just lying around like perfectly, do not trust that producer. This is actually super clean for my, uh, uh, for my usual state because I just rearranged everything and I cleaned it up so I look a little bit more organized for this stream here. Um, all right. Thanks all alone together community and my amazing super guys in Italy. Uh, thanks for watching. Johan, we can turn this off now. And we'll see you. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Let's sign off. Bye bye guys. Hope you had fun. <laughs>